Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Right now, Congressman, uh, I'd like to say it's good to have you on, but I'd like to have you on under better circumstances. Yes, it would be nice. It's uh, really a sad event. I uh, can't uh, work with me and for me in the campaign in 1988. He was a college student back then. And that was the Libertarian campaign. And he's worked for me essentially ever since. There was a small break there, but he was uh, involved in D.C. with me. And then he was the one that I gave credit to for really uh, giving me the final sales pitch. And I, I think even you had encouraged me to run before I did, but and a lot of people did. But it was finally Kent who sat down and outlined the value of it. And uh, so I give him a lot of credit. If uh, if we did achieve anything, if it was a worthwhile venture, which I believe it has been, uh, Kemp deserves a lot of credit for it. Congressman, since you mentioned the worthwhile venture and and Kent pushing you over the edge or the camel's straw that you know set all this in uh, motion, the straw that broke the camel's back, uh, we've had a great victory, uh, and I always want the listeners to realize that. Tens of millions of people now know the Federal Reserve is private. They know about the currency tax, the inflation tax. They know about the New World Order. Instead of uh, there being a fake neocon or communist choice on the colleges, everywhere I go and all the people I've talked to say the new dominant force isn't liberal or conservative. It is true liberty, what you call uh, constitutionalist. And you running it just has energized so much. Can you speak to that? Well, you know, we discovered there were a lot of folks that had been around for a bit and have known about it, and you've talked to them for many, many years. And I knew there were a large number of individuals like that, but I didn't know how the young people would respond. And to me, it's amazing how the young generation has just jumped on this, realized what's going on, and they put it together, the, de the burden of debt and the wars going on in the welfare state. And uh, so many young people that come to my office now and talk to him, and he said, boy, did you open up my eyes about the Federal Reserve. I've been studying that. So I, I think, uh, you know, we've uh, really lit a fire. And that, uh, and, and that, that's not me personally. I mean, it was everybody put together, uh, people like you that have been involved for a long time, plus everybody else. But, but you know, a lot of people uh, got after me for this recent article. I said, oh, no, he's too optimistic. They think we can do some good. Well, I'm cautiously optimistic, and I know what kind of a fight we have up to, but I am a bit more optimistic now because of the response that we have had and the willingness of so many people uh, willing to look at the Federal Reserve. But we also have to realize how powerful they are and how much control they have and, and how they run their government. But but at least I think we're being, being more competitive. Congressman, I agree. Uh, I mean, you can't overstate... Uh, the effect this has had, your running uh, has had, I mean, it really broke the dam. I see that as a major new plateau in the reawakening of liberty, a new renaissance, uh, legalizing freedom, as you put it so well. And it is just almost immeasurable uh, what's happened. We know we're in a lot better place uh with the public being informed than we were just a year and a half ago. And again, you're right, the credit goes to the tens of millions of Ron Paul supporters that have energized and woken up so many people. And the victory is in resistance, and, and the victory is in that both parties are basically intellectually bankrupt. The public now, as you know, in major polls, Congress has like a 12% approval rating. Bush has got like a 24%. Cheney's got like a 10%. Hillary's got a 12%. I mean, for the first time, both parties are discredited, and that's a good thing, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, truth is uh, uh, what we're after. And and the fact that the government is failing at everything that they do, whether it's the monetary system, the welfare state, uh, the protection of our freedoms, or our foreign policy, it's so obvious. 
that that is the reason we have such a vital role to play. We can complain, we can put out all the problems and condemn the Fed and and all and the IRS, but we have to come up with something that is very positive, and and that is our job to present the case for the concept of liberty and you know our Bill of Rights and what America used to stand for and property rights. So we have to also have the program that will give the answers to the problems that we have. Giving people a real solution. It's one thing to say that those are bad choices, which is true. We're now giving people an option. Tell us briefly about the shift in the campaign to this new organization and how the people can energize that even more than it already is energized, Congressman. Well, it's it's been going well. Uh, we have a new group. It's called Campaign for Liberty. It's just a continuation of the other campaign. It's always a campaign for liberty, as far as I'm concerned. And it's in its early stages. And of course, we're uh, backing and promoting right now the the big rally in Washington on uh, on July 12th. And uh, I'll I'll be there, and we're pushing that. But then, of course, uh, the new organization will be pushing very, very hard our rally up in Minneapolis at the same time the Republicans are having their rally. And this will be a positive rally for all the views and all the good things that uh, uh, we stand for. So if anybody's interested in that, it's really easy to find out more about the organization and just go to campaignforliberty.com. And we do now have, I think it's 66,000 people have joined. Our goal is to have 100,000 by September 2nd, and I think we will. I mean, we had quite a few more than that in the other campaign, and, and uh, I think it's going to, to grow and have, uh, you know, a very beneficial effect on all that we do, and we'll work in conjunction with all the other uh, freedom groups. Absolutely, and I want to restate the obvious, because some people don't consciously understand this, 2% started the Revolutionary War when the British came to confiscate the guns. Uh, and it was about 5% that beat the greatest army on earth that had never been defeated. The British uh, Redcoats were called the Invincibles uh, at that time because they'd beaten everybody. They went on a few years later to beat uh, Napoleon. Uh, but And we lost most of those battles. But it was the willingness to keep coming back to the fight that finally brought down uh, that uh, enemy. And we're going to be remembering that tomorrow. Can, can, can you say some words about what America is uh, really about in its second uh, uh, birth? Uh, I mean, I think this is a very important July 4th that we're going to be having in less than 24 hours, Congressman. Well, the wonderful thing about our revolution was it proved the old adage that ideas do have consequences. The founders weren't just a ragtag a bunch of guys getting together and say, well, let's go after the British. They were philosophers and they knew history and, and they had this all put together and they knew and understood it. Now, the most unique thing about our revolution was that for the most part, when revolutions usually come about, they come about by the failure of one state and somebody else comes in and usually one group of thugs replaces another group of thugs. Our revolution was unique in that the people had more freedom rather than less freedom, and it wasn't just a replacement of one group of authoritarians with another group. Just like with the French Revolution, instead of just being just as bad, it got even worse. That, that's right, and it was all done, you know, the Jacobins were, oh, they were delightful people. Some people compare them to the, the neocons, to the Jacobins. Uh, oh, we're all doing this for the goodness of the country and the people. We're over there helping the people of Iraq, and we're going to take care of people home at home here. Uh, so, yes, but they can turn into thugs when they say, well, we are such good people, we are going to force you to do it. And if you don't obey us and if you don't come become good like we are, we're going to kill you. So, And this is where what we're approaching now. Just think of all these laws that have been put on the books today. Uh, so far, they haven't rounded up tens of thousands, but... There's hints that they might if they, if it gets out of hand because they certainly have the authority on the books now. So it's it's going to be a tough fight, and that's why our ideas and the ideas are a continuation of the founders' ideas uh, must have consequences. You know, uh, armies can't stop an idea whose time has come, and uh, that's why I still remain optimistic. And you're absolutely right. You don't have to wait for a vote of 51% of the people to endorse 
are ideas. You have to have people that who are ideologically dedicated, and then they will go out and do the work, and the others will come along, especially when they see the failure of one system, then they know it has to be replaced. And if they have any common sense, why do they want to replace it with another authoritarian government? Why don't we go back to the positive attitude about how freedom works? Well, I agree with you, uh, and I love the Victor Hugo quote, uh, no army can stop an idea whose time has come. That's actually how my new film, uh, Truth Rising, I'll send you a copy, Congressman, starts is with that quote. But, but you're right. We can't just let the old system fall apart on its own weight, which it clearly is going to do. The question is next month or five years from now. You know, it could happen any time, probably sooner rather than later. But will it fall into something even worse, some new socialism or some new fa fascism? Or will we be there? At the time of, uh, you know, where the system is liquid during a revolution, it becomes liquid to get control of the reins and then get us back uh, to sound money and a sound system and restore the republic uh, that you've been working so hard to do, sir. Uh, I want to now, in the uh, 15 minutes or so we have left with you, to get into Iran, get into the situation in Iraq, uh, and I also want to get into the economy. It's all tied together, obviously, with oil now going up to 146 a barrel.